Yet what is noteworthy is the 25 million expense in 2022, despite the club being in the championship. The Baggies had to write off 7 million pounds in loans made to other companies owned by Guo Chen Lai, despite assurances of repayment. So, so you know, let's, let's not take the piss here. I, I certainly wasn't. Well, I think you are. But it... Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week, we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. Today, we journey to the West Midlands to unravel the financial story of West Bromwich Albion. With the takeover on the horizon, what financial shape do the Baggies find themselves in? It's a good start, you know, it's a good start to the new year, good start to the new kind of, you know, regime, if you like. Flashback to 2013, and the Baggies delivered an eighth place finish, their highest in the Premier League. West Brom would bounce across the bottom half of the top tier for a further five seasons before suffering relegation in 2018. Two years later though, and West Brom would secure their return to top flight football. The dreaded yo-yo was out in full force though, with the baggies dropping back down to the championship a year later. The decade finished with West Brom regrouping in mid-table of the second tier. Overall, a downward trajectory for the Baggies, dotted with some memorable moments. On the sidelines, the Hawthorns have seen a revolving door of managers. A staggering 15 different individuals occupied the dugout. Say them along with me if you know them. Hodgson, Clark, Downing, Mel, Irving, Kelly, Pulis, Megson, Pardew, Moore, Shan, Village. Allardyce, Ishmael, Bruce. Now let's turn our attention backstage. What unfolded behind the scenes? Firstly, West Brom adjusted their accounting period in 2020 and 2021, a response we've seen from other clubs coping with COVID's disruption. Revenue went from strength to strength in that initial Premier League run, peaking at 138 million. However, subsequent relegations and the impact of COVID-19 led to a decline, with the baggies generating just 65 million in 2022. What factors contribute to this decline? Let's analyse it by revenue type. First up, let's discuss gate receipts. These topped in 2015 at 8 million, then dropped to 5. Proportionally, they've consistently accounted for 5 to 10 percent. What's the story behind attendance figures? A decade ago, over 25,000 fans filled the Hawthorns. COVID-19 may have hastened the decline, with under 22,000 attending on average in 2022. Next up, let's dive into media or broadcasting revenues. They peaked at 119 million in 2017, fueled by the enhanced TV deal and a commendable 10th place finish. As expected, these revenues decreased with relegation, although parachute payments cushioned the blow, amounting to 52 million in 2022. Commercial revenues have also suffered since the baggage relegation, decreasing by half from 13 million in 2018. Analyzing by league position reveals a general correlation between revenue and league performance, with yo yoing providing West Brom additional income in the championship. On average, Premier League years only generate 1.6 times more compared to the second tier. <laughs> Job done. This story unfolds in two parts. The top flight run yielded steady profits, peaking at almost 40 million in 2017. However, following the relegation year, losses become a consistent theme. League position highlights the highs and lows, with a staggering £60 million swing in profits from 10th to 22nd place. On average, the advances of Premier League football are evident, resulting in an average £9 million operating profit. So what's happening? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button, and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set that timer, grey up that revenue, and dive into staff costs. Wages continue to climb during the top flight tenure, yet remain proportionate to the revenues generated. However, following relegation in 2018, the wage bill halved, only to surge again with promotion due to a blend of squad investment and promotion bonuses. The baggies' wages continue to fluctuate as they oscillate between divisions. 
The trend is mirrored in staff numbers, which rose during the Premier League spell, stabilised after the initial relegation, and then declined. Setting aside the impact of COVID, the Baggies have consistently maintained wages below 75% of revenues, with 2017 being a standout year at under 60%. So how effective was this wage bill in terms of points for West Brom? In their three championship years, points have come at an average cost of 700,000. In non-relegation years, Premier League points have cost just under 2 million each but spiked to 3 million when the baggies couldn't avoid the drop. The tale of two halves is already evident after discussing staff costs. Let's now shift our focus to operating expenses. These costs steadily rise during the Premier League run, yet what is noteworthy is the 25 million expense in 2022, despite the club being in the championship. The baggies had to write off 7 million pounds in loans made to other companies owned by Guo Chen Lai, despite assurances of repayment. So, so you know, let's, let's not take the piss here. I, I certainly wasn't. Well, I think you are. But, uh... This hints at trouble behind the scenes, which we'll explore further shortly. Returning to the walkthrough, it's evident that EBITDA favours Premier League football. Next, stadium facilities, relating to long-term assets such as the Hawthorns, which is a relatively minor in the larger context. So let's remove them and let's discuss transfer fees. Transfer for expenses rise as the Baggies aim to consolidate their position in the Premier League. However, it's the substantial losses incurred from 2018 onwards that have plunged West Brom into consistent deficits with no profits recorded since the banner year in 2017. On average, the margins paint a clear picture. The Premier League delivers 5% profits, contrasting with the 17% losses incurred in the Championship. What was the key today? I think really good organisation. Uh... So let's analyse if the cash aligns with the profit narrative we've just explored. As usual, we're scrutinising the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, illustrates the benefits of being in the Prem. Cash flows in during all top flight years, with only modest outflows during the championship build, which may come as a surprise. Over 10 years, the club has generated 125 million in operational cash flow, driven by 18 million annually in the Premier League. Now let's shift our attention back to transfers. As expected, net spending increases as West Brom builds out the team. Following the initial relegation, the cash situation mirrors the team's yo-yo performance on the field. Over the decade, West Brom has sunk £94 million into the playing squad. Combining these amounts, the outlook appears promising. In fact, the Baggies have managed to generate cash over the last 10 years, totalling £31 million, thanks to their early Premier League performance. Nevertheless, the volatility observed in recent seasons may raise some concern. So let's delve into who's footing the bill, or perhaps not footing the bill. In fact, small amounts of cash have been leaving the club since 2015. However, the situation may not be as rosy as it appears. For instance, West Brom took out a £2 million loan. Whilst not significant in the grand scheme, the Baggies missed their repayment date, resulting in accruing interest at a rate of 5% per month, equivalent to about 80% interest annually. So what has transpired since then? Well, West Brom's tenure in the second tier appears set to continue with another mid-table finish in 2023. Additionally, West Brom has recently secured a larger £20 million facility, incurring interest at approximately 14%. This suggests that the reduction in parachute payments may be starting to have an impact. Lastly, rumours of a potential sale have emerged. Could a change in ownership alter the fortunes at the Hawthorns? Only time will tell. Until next time. <laughs>